Hello, today I'm going to talk about how to create a Vectorcast project. We are going to start with a blank slate today and create a project from scratch. So what you see here is the Vectorcast GUI. If you've used Vectorcast before, you're probably familiar with this. And if we go to File New, you see we have a number of options. The top one being the Vectorcast project. Um, we can also create environments outside of the project, but we're going to start with a project. So our options are an empty project. This gives you kind of a blank slate, and then you have to pick what compiler nodes you want and other things that you want to configure. Um, we can do it from existing environments. If you have environments that live outside of a project, you can add those to the project, and the Vectorcast project will inherit the settings from those environments that you choose. You can also do it from a compiler settings, which is more of a system testing type thing, or you can do it from configuration file. When you would use the from configuration file is if you have a custom RSP configuration file um, and you wanted to create a project based on that custom RSP. And an RSP stands for Runtime Support Package. And that's basically the configuration that Vectorcast uses to test on typically an embedded target or a simulator. It includes the cross compiler, the linker, and then also the execution method to load code onto your target or your simulator and then collect those results back. Um, for this example, we're going to start with just an empty project, and we're going to give it a project name. We'll just call it Sample Proj here, okay? And then for the compiler, we're going to use the Vectorcast MinGW. This is the MinGW is the uh, GCC compiler for Windows. It's built into our Vectorcast tool. Actually, we deliver it with our Vectorcast tool, and we're going to do it for C++, okay? So we choose this, and what's going to happen is we're going to create a project called Sample Proj, and we're going to have one compiler node called Vectorcast MinGWC++. When we hit Create, you see up here in the left-hand corner we have our project view. And the name of our project is Sample Project, and then we have this one compiler node called Vectorcast MinGWC++. Um, if I right-click on here, you can see what this configuration is here. This configuration shows that we're using G++ compiler, which is the compiler, the MinGW compiler. We're using G++ for the linker, and then we're linking in some static libraries. And then for the execute down here, we have a, we have a blank, and that's because if you leave the execute command blank, then Vectorcast assumes that you're gonna just build it into an executable that runs natively on that particular host. So for MinGW, or I'm sorry, for Windows, it would be an, a .exe. For Linux, it would be a you know, dot .out file or something like that. So that is our compiler node. Now, we can add other compiler nodes to our project by right-clicking here and say Add Compiler. And you notice we have a number of options under here. Um, let's choose just one. Um, let's choose Green Hills. It's a pretty popular one. And we can go to Green Hills ARM Bare Board Simulator, and we can go to C++. We can add this. And you notice it's going to show up at the same level here as our Vectorcast MinGW, all right? So if we right click here, and so we say open configuration, you can see before we were using the MinGW compiler, now we're using the uh, Green Hills ARM compiler, which is CX ARM. We're using the Green Hills CX ARM linker for the linker, and then for the execute command, you notice we're using multi, and for the sim ARM. And so multi is the Green Hills debugger that allows us to, um, that has a simulator built into it, basically, that allows you to uh, connect to the debugger, which will start up the simulator. Then you can load tar you can load uh, code onto that simulator and run it. And this playback file right here is how Vectorcast knows how to load code on the target, um, how to start the code executing, how to set breakpoints, gather data, that sort of thing. So for, for now, we're just going to stick with MainGW. So underneath the compiler, you have a test suite. Underneath the test suite, you can also have a configuration. Um, you see you can have unique settings at the test suite level. A common use case for this might be if you have a board defined up here, but underneath it you want different test suites with different defines and, and different include paths. You could set those up at the test suite level. And then the test suite would inherit from the level above it, and then anything you've set at that level would be would override the settings that it inherits. And, and so, and then you can have groups below that, which are just groupings of code. There's no, you can notice there's no configuration setting at a group level. 
okay? Um, you can also create new test suites. Like if we wanted to create a new test suite for the Green Hills, we could say right here, we could call this, I don't know, GHS driver code or something, right? And this would be a test suite right here for this particular um, configuration node. Now, let's say that we, we have our compiler configured. Now, we don't, we don't have any source directories. Um, we don't have anything telling us where our source code lives. So before we can create environments, we need to add those. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in here, underneath, underneath source directories, click in this gray box, and we're going to click Add. For this example, I'm just going to do the tutorials. So I'm going to go to the tutorial code that we use for VectorCast, and I'm going to click Choose. And you can see that that directory shows up right here under source directories. Um, so now we can um, create unit tests based on that directory. And we might need to add include paths if we had include directories or whatnot, but so we might have to add those as well. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and just add one. And then we're going to turn on white box testing because we want to test we want to test with white box on. And then we're also going to choose a coverage type. So we're going to choose the 178 level B here. And then that seems to be everything that we want to set this, for this particular time. We're going to save that. Now we come down to our group level. And now we can right click here and say create unit test environment. And we typically want to do interactive. OK, so we click on interactive. Now this the environment wizard comes up and you notice we go to choose compiler. It fills in all the data from from our compiler node, all our MinGW. Here's our compiler, our preprocessor, our linker. Here's our execute fan command, which is blank. And then so and you notice we get on to step three. We're doing traditional unit testing. Step four, our coverage type is that one we chose, level B with white box on. And then our locate source files, you notice we're, it's still got that tutorial directory, which has five, four units in it. OK, so now we need to name the environment. I'm going to just name this one tutorial because that was a code that I chose to test. And then coming in here, we're just going to choose, um, let's say, two files, manager and database. OK, so now you notice all of these um, steps over on the right hand side turn turn gray or black so that tells us that we're if none of them are red that means we're good to go we could just hit build at that point so now we're going to go out and build this environment based on those configuration settings that we that we have at that compiler node so we're going to let this process all those two files so now you notice a tutorial showed up here so now you notice the VectorCast opened up the environment view, okay? But if you look down here, we still have our project view down the bottom left-hand corner. So we can click here, and now we see our project view. So now we have tutorial open. It's in yellow, which means that it's open. Um, and then up here is our environment view with our tutorial. Now we, we added two files to this environment, manager and database. And so now we're going to create tests. So this is create quick tests against this uh, place order. Insert tests. Let's so say we want to do table number one, seat number two. Um, and we want, let's say we want to do return value of zero, right? This is an incredibly simple test. Oh, let's do order an entree. Let's order some steak. Steak, oh, let's order lobster. That sounds real pretty good. Uh, hit play. You notice we get our code coverage, we ordered some lobster, test is successful, that sort of thing. So we're going to close this environment. We need to make sure that we save because we want to save those tests that we just created. And now we have a um, environment underneath the VectorCast MinGW. If we want to create another one, we just right click and say create unit test environment and we choose interactive again. And that'll let us create another for this Green Hills arm. We can right click here, add group, call it driver. And then from here, we can right click and say create unit test environment interactive. Now, when we do this, I want to show you this. Um, you notice this number step five is, is, is red. That's because we didn't set up any source direct, any, any directories to find our code that we want to test. So if we cancel out of here, we can come back in here and say open configuration. And then we probably need to come in here and add in all our source directories, however many there happen to be there. And of course, if we want to change white box or coverage type, that sort of thing as well. We need to do that as well. Um, but that's a very basic walkthrough of how to create a VectorCast project from scratch using the MinGW compiler. 
Um, a couple other things I want to talk about while we're here is let's go back and close. Let's close out this project and let's talk about a couple of the other options. So let's just show an example of from configuration file because this is one that quite a number of our customers use because quite a number of our customers have um, can have unique or custom RSPs. So if we do from configuration file, we still have a project name, sample custom proj. And then we need to go search for a configuration file. Um, if any config file can be a custom one, let's choose this one um, here. And we'll hit create. And it's still going to show up as vectorcast mngw because that was the config file that we um, were using here. But if we would have had a, config, a custom one, then the custom config file would have shown up here instead of the mngw. But I just want to walk you through, that would be how you would create your project based on a custom RSP. So, and then you can do the same thing from here. You know, you can right click here, open configuration, add in your source directories, that sort of thing. And then do your create unit test environment interactive. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day. Thank you.